Okay, so this unit is here. So, uh, so one of these goes here, and one of these goes there for the drive, mm -hmm. and then the same parts are just kind of separated uh, for the weapon. Oh, oh, so of course. If I can the find a thing. weapon loader, so you can kind of see it in here. So for the weapon, we have two of the same motors back to back on a common shaft. Mm -hmm. um, we did that for, for redundancy of the motors. We know if there's a jam, that's a failure point, but can't have it all. Right. Um, and it's already saved us because we've lost a chain in one of our matches. And thankfully, because we have the, yeah, the, two the other chains ones on the same shaft, it still worked with full power. Okay. Um, so we have two motors on the, on the same shaft, the same motor controllers from the drivetrain, yep. uh, the same encoder chips. Um, it's all the same. Uh, and then we have a, a, a slip clutch uh, with uh, on either side for the sprockets so that if there is a, a massive hit, right. the, the chains will, you know, will slip and spin a little Slide bit a little before bit. the magnets and the motors explode. <laughs> <laughs> Which is usually not a good thing, right? No, hey, it's great no, for no, the no. camera. But... Fantastic for the camera, not so good for the robot. Right. Okay. So I, I really like this, and something I hadn't thought about is you, how how many of these components that you're repeating the use of, right? Like in my mind, I would have thought your drive motors and your weapon motor would have been different for whatever reason. And in a lot of ways, you want different things out of them. Like, right. For example, our drivetrain, we're we're pretty fast as robots go. Mm -hmm. We go 25 miles an hour. Uh, but the weapon at the tips of the, the teeth, it spins at 200 miles an hour. Right. So we have totally different gearing. Uh, okay. There's a very different load uh, on these motors. Uh, but fortunately, with, with this motor and controller combo, we found something that was good at both jobs. Right. Um, and yeah, like you said, it, it makes it a lot easier for swapping out parts, keeping spares. Uh, right. And so for, for us, it was it was an important progression off of previous things where we didn't do that. Okay. And, and we've loved it ever since. Yeah, yeah, I can see a lot of advantages, so. Cool. I didn't realize when I saw the bot running that I thought it was four wheel drive. Oh yeah. And I guess it's not, right? Because you're just got the two two drive motors and then, then the, they're chained together. Right, we are chain driven. Uh, so uh, we're using chains for, for production and power uh, distribution. Right. So we have a first stage that goes from the motor to this jack shaft. Uh, and then on the inside, so it's well protected. Yep. And then on the outside, there's a chain that goes to the back wheel and a chain that goes to the front. Um, it, it gives us a little bit more redundancy in terms of drivetrain. Um, we've tried separate motors for the front wheels and right. for the back wheels in the past. Yeah, there's some other robots here that do it. Um, but especially with a vertical spinner, it's so forward heavy okay. that you're always loading the front motors more. Right. So I'd rather distribute that power evenly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it makes better donuts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there's certain cars that are done that way as well, right? Right. Weight's distributed yeah, that it's way. A, so it's, it's a it's an a... all-wheel drive system. Right. In, in this regard. You had talked about the RC electronics just a little bit. So is it, are you really just using something from an RC? Yeah. Is that? Yeah, I am. 